When it comes to making your pages responsive in Cornerstone, where should you start? A lot of experts recommend building your page from mobile up, because as of March 2015, the amount of users globally connecting to web pages on mobile surpassed that of desktops. My recommendation, build your site in whatever size helps you visualize it the most, and helps you create the best content. Realistically, it doesn't matter which device is used to view your site, the most important thing is making your website's visitor experience uniform and functional on all devices. The purpose of this Cornerstone tutorial is to teach Cornerstone users how to make the average page responsive for all viewing sizes. For some elements we need to use CSS, for others the best option is creating multiple sections or elements and hiding them based on screen size. Our goal is to give you guys the most common codes and practices you'll need to optimize most elements for mobile. Before you can optimize for other screen sizes, you need to know the proper way to test your page layout on different sizes. Cornerstone does have a built-in function to view different screen sizes. However, in my experience, the built-in interface seems to be a little more forgiving than actual mobile devices and other screen sizes. Realistically, the best way to test how your website looks on mobile or really any device would be to actually visit your website on each device and screen size. Unfortunately, that's not an option for all of us because we're not millionaires and we can't afford to buy every device that somebody's going to view our site on. So there is a lot of cool websites for viewing your site on a simulation of multiple devices, and I'll leave links to those in the description. But really, how I like to test my site is by simply clicking on the side of the browser window and shrinking the site down exponentially. This also seems to be a fairly accurate way of determining what things will look like on the various sizes. And you really get to see how responsive your site is as you shrink down. So this is the most convenient way and that's how we test our sites. But I do recommend using a combination of all of these tools for your final product because ultimately you want your site to be perfect. So let's start with an example. Most web pages have images and text. When a page is scaled down, images automatically respond to screen size. Text, however, does not. This is a problem. All of our pages have text. Large font sizes take too much room on smaller screen widths. You can see here that our headlines are scaling down, and that's because we've already applied Cornerstone's responsive text function to them. Unfortunately, this function only affects headlines and no other text or elements. We have a separate video here explaining how to use responsive text. So how do we change the paragraph's font size based on screen width? The most basic way in Cornerstone is by duplicating each section that you have text in and modifying them based on the screen size that's going to be viewing them and hide using Cornerstone's hide based on screen width option, which is only available on sections and rows, just so you know. So we would duplicate this section, hide the original section on mobile, and change the, dupl the duplicate's text size, and hide the section on all devices except for mobile. This does get the job done. The issue is that it takes too much time, and oftentimes you end up using way more code than you need to. Another option would be simply duplicating the element inside the section that isn't working cor correctly, modify the element to fit the screen size the issue is on, and use helper classes to hide the element on other screen sizes. If you don't know how to use helper classes, we have a PDF listing them here. So you can check that out if you need to. This strategy is more efficient than the first one. It still involves too much extra work for me, and too much code. Having to optimize for every section or element individually is time consuming. We need a way to change the text size of every paragraph on the entire page based on screen size all in one code, not by just creating multiple sections or elements. Luckily, doing this is possible with just a few lines of code, and it doesn't only apply to text or font size. You can use this code to change the style and any style of any element based on screen size. The code I'm referring to is called a CSS media query, or specifically the at media rule. At Media is a very powerful tool for responsive design, and it has a ton of uses on, uses on top of what we'll cover in this video. If you want more details on At Media, I'll have several links in the description on my favorite CSS sites that go over the different styles and options At Media allows you to apply. 
But for now, we're just going to talk about how to use App Media to apply styles based on screen widths. So to start off, I'm going to get the selector for the element I'm changing. We do this in Google Chrome by right clicking the text and pressing inspect. And as I suspected, the text that we're going to change is a paragraph HTML element or just simply P. Conveniently, some of the other text on the page that needs resizing is also a paragraph element. We're going to be able to select all the paragraphs on the page just by using the letter P. So what we'll do is jump into our CSS and start out by typing at media, which is the rule. Then type screen, which is declaring the media type and parenthesis max width colon 480 pixels which is selecting only browser views that have a max width of 480 pixel, pixels and parenthesis and then a curly brace opener p which is selecting the paragraphs and you'll notice you don't use a period class selector because this is an html element another curly brace and this is where we will style the elements so I'm going to type font size 16 pixels, and I'm using the important tag just in case, and then use two curly braces to close it out. Okay, so let's see if that worked. Go to save the page, then opt to view it outside of Cornerstone, and we'll shrink it to mobile size. And perfect, the two paragraph elements in question resize as soon as the window hits 480 pixels. So if we keep scrolling here, we can see that a few other text elements on the page need that same resizing that our paragraphs got. Both the block quote text and the FAQ accordion text could use some resizing on smaller screens. All we have to do to optimize block quote and accordion text here is just get the selectors for them and add them next to the P selector that we already created in our custom CSS. And that will make that text responsive the same way that our paragraphs are. So to do this, once again, I'm going to right click the block quote text, inspect the element, and right away I see the selector that will allow me to control all the block quotes on this page. Copy that, go back into custom CSS, find the media rule we just made. And to use multiple selectors, just add a comma right after the P, and with no space, I'm going to paste the dot x dash block quote selector that we just copied. Unlike the paragraph selector P, the X block quote selector will require a period in front of it since it is a class name while the P was just defining an HTML element. Now, real quick, we're just going to make sure this block quote selector worked. So go into mobile view and now both block quotes in the slider and below are 16 pixels in extra small views. Now let's do the same thing for the accordion text. I'm going to right click like we did before, inspect, and the first class on my styles window is x-accordion-inner. So I'm going to copy that again, go into custom CSS, put a comma after the block quote selector, and again with no space, paste the accordion selector. And immediately you can see on views 480 pixels and lower, the accordion text is 16 pixels. So with only three lines of code, I was able to make the majority of the text on this page optimized for mobile. This barely even scratches the surface of what you can do with that media. You can customize any element on the page and any style of that element on the page with this code based on the screen size viewing it. What's more is you can even take it a step further if you're using a child theme and put at media styles inside your style.css editor. And this way, on any page on your site, certain odd elements will automatically be optimized for certain view sizes. And that is the most efficient way to do this. In the background here, we're showing off what some feature boxes on our homepage look like with and without the at media codes that we've used to optimize them for the other viewing sizes. Uh, this is really just to kind of show off some of the stuff we're going to be going over in the next video in this responsive series. So it's just kind of a glimpse at that and a glimpse at the power of the at media rules. So you can see a lot of stuff's just cut out when the at media is deleted. A lot of the text isn't there. Nothing looks the same. We'll cover how we did this in the next video as well as a couple other tricks.
All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe for more. And don't be afraid to leave a comment saying what kind of Cornerstone or WordPress tutorials you guys are looking for. We're always open to suggestions. Uh, we do have a lot more on the way. Sorry this video took so long to get out, but we're cranking up the production here. We're going to get more going. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.